Every day, thousands of people travel through train stations, making it a treasure trove for pickpockets, as they know that each and every person will either have a wallet, a suitcase, or a work bag with them. Alex and Paul are both busy casing the joint, looking for a potential mark. Pickpockets often like to work in pairs, with one looking for the target and the other doing the lift. Despite the amount of bags that are being left exposed in this station today, the boys are looking to lift a wallet. And all they need to perform this hit is a piece of newspaper and some chalk. This is known as the Phantom Wallet. For this hit to work, Alex must be able to identify a person who keeps their wallet in their back pocket. Alex has spotted someone patting his back pocket and moves in. Now it's Alex's job to make sure Paul knows who the target is and where the wallet is. And this is done with the age-old trick of using a bit of chalk. This man has now become the mark. This technique of using chalk to mark a target is where the term originated from. Alex has done his job, now it's Paul's turn. He spotted the mark and he knows that the wallet will be in his right pocket as Alex has placed the chalk deliberately on his right shoulder. Paul has to size up the shape of the wallet the aim is to replace the Mark's wallet with a piece of folded newspaper of the same size without him noticing. One bump is all it takes. If you missed it like the Mark did, here it is again. No sooner has the wallet been taken from the Mark's pocket, Paul deposits it in Alex's umbrella, and they both make a quick getaway. The Mark now has a worthless piece of paper in his back pocket, but it still feels like he's got his wallet. And it's only when he tries to buy something that he finds out that he's been robbed. Somebody pushed me. And then I, I thought I wanted some water, so I went to the shop to buy a bottle of water. And uh, suddenly, when I went to pay for, for it, I hadn't, I hadn't got my wallet with me. I had just this piece of paper. At first, I thought I had to drop it or something, but later, I was thinking about everything. I realized it was maybe it was this guy who pushed me. If you want to keep your wallet, don't put it in your back pocket. It's one of the easiest places to steal from. And if someone invades your personal space, Think, could they have stolen something? And if you have to check your property, always remember someone might be watching. Out of sight, out of mind, out of pocket. Pickpockets are always looking for new ways to get close to their victims. And there's nothing that achieves that better than a good, old-fashioned uniform. This is going to work a treat, aren't right? yeah, okay. Ready to go. Alex and Paul are off to practice their security guard pat-down routine. Our hustlers have gone to this aircraft museum in Manchester. It's a good location because it's large, has many secluded spots, and we would naturally expect security at places like this. Jess will be helping the boys out later, but first, Alex and Paul find a part of the museum that isn't being watched by the real security guards. Whilst no one is watching, they put on their fake uniforms with a little bit of help. Excuse me, madam. Can I just take my hat? Just take Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Move along. All right. Let's get into camp. Now fully kitted out as security guards, all they have to do is wait, and it's not long before their first victim arrives. 
Excuse me. Could I ask you to come over here for just a second, please? Routine security check. Uh, may I look inside your bag? Because he is wearing a security guard's uniform, she allows Paul to delve into her bag. Do you have anything sharp in here at all? Anything I should be aware of? Anything in your back pockets here nothing at all? No. No? Nothing in your back pockets? No. While Alex distracts the mark, Paul takes her purse out of the bag. Just see if there's anything here. OK. I'll use it. No problem. Thank you. Thanks very much for your help. Bye-bye. An easy steal. Now Jess comes into play. Excuse, Excuse me. Can we just check inside your bag for a second? It feels completely normal that they would check Jess's bag as well. Paul simply slips in the stolen wallet and Jess walks away with the evidence. It's not long before another Mark walks into the trap. Excuse me, sir. Can I ask you to come over here for just a second? It's a routine security check. Uh, do you don't mind putting your arms up for me, please? Check here. Do you have a... Uh, do you have anything sharp in here? No. That's all? No? All right, here. No. There goes the wallet. Put your arms there. All right, thank you very much. OK. Have a lovely you. day. Thanks. Bye-bye. He even thanked Paul for making him feel secure, not realising that he has just lost his wallet. And check inside your bag. Again, Jess comes back to take away the evidence. As the next mark approaches, it's time for Alex to practise his distraction techniques and empty this guy's pockets. This for me. Thank you. Have you got anything in your pockets? Nothing in here? Just my phone and my wallet. Open your phone. phone. Yeah. Wallet number three. Sorry. Alex distracts the Mark's attention while he passes his phone straight over his shoulder. Thank you for your help. OK. Thanks a lot. Staying too long could arouse suspicion. It's time the hustlers made a clean getaway. And we came clean with their victims. Move along, please. Move along. Purse is in my bag. <laughs> I think the guy that was checking my bag might have taken my purse out of my bag. I wouldn't have realised they weren't security guards. Oh. <laughs> right. I was probably too trusting. You know, guy stands up with a security guard hat on and a security tab and asks me to lift my arms up. He's going to search me. Looks officious enough. I was like, trusting, too trusting. More fool me. I felt a bit stupid, really, because he didn't have like any real identification apart from the uniform. So I just felt a bit stupid. I'd just been sucked in by someone walking up just in a uniform. Shouldn't have been able to frisk me, really. That's a bit out of, out of line. This con works because of social compliance. We are all preconditioned to react in certain ways, especially when confronted with figures of authority. And people generally will do what they're told. Now, all a con man does is abuse that situation. Pickpockets often work in busy and enclosed areas, such as buses and tubes. Now, this gives them a great opportunity to get very close to you and your belongings. Alex, Jess and Paul are going to spend the day travelling on London buses to see what they can pick up. Alex has identified a possible target and gets close. Excuse me, sir. A few stops later, and he has got himself a wallet. But how did he do it? Let's rewind and take a closer look. Alex looks like a normal commuter reading the paper and positions himself as close as possible to the mark. As the bus hits a pothole, Alex uses it as an opportunity to lurch forward and feel the man's jacket to find out where he keeps his valuables. Alex has discovered the man has a wallet in his inside jacket pocket. As the bus jolts again, Alex uses the bump to disguise his hand going into the mark's jacket and removes the wallet. 
Here it is again. Alex then deftly wraps the wallet up inside his newspaper and gets off the bus at the next stop. It's Paul's turn, and he has spotted a pair of designer sunglasses he fancies. For a practice pickpocket, those glasses will be gone in the blink of an eye. Here comes Paul. And he's got them. So, if you missed it like the mark did, let's go back and take a closer look. As Paul approaches the mark, he uses his newspaper to disguise his actions. He deliberately pushes past and in one smooth action, lifts the glasses out of the jacket. If things can be lifted that easily, it explains why pickpocketing features so high on the list of city crimes in the UK. Later on, on the same route, Jess pretends to be an innocent new mother. But the baby she is holding is actually plastic. She's only caught the bus so she can catch a mark. And here he is, about to get off at the next stop. Jess has spotted a mobile phone and moves in for the steal. The baby acts as cover and is also an ideal hiding place for the mobile phone. The mark doesn't suspect a thing. If you missed it, here it is again. Jess takes a seat. And the mark leaves the bus, unaware that he has just been robbed. The bus makes an unlikely getaway vehicle, but it's worked for Jess. So what can you do to prevent your pockets being picked? There's many ways that you can identify yourself as a target to thieves. If you've got expensive goods on and they're on display, this is going to draw thieves in. You can wear different headphones for your MP3 player to disguise what model that is. And if you've got expensive sunglasses, if you've got a big bulging wallet with too much cash in in your back pocket, the thieves will see this. They're actively out there looking to target people. Keep these things covered up and don't let the thieves see them. Alex is on his way to this cafe bar. It's the lunchtime rush and Alex takes his time to find his target. We've got it covered so you'll see what these customers miss. Alex is almost spoilt for choice because this scam is the jacket pickpocket. First, Alex is going to have a pot for the centre pocket. Then he intends to go for the top pocket and finally his third choice is the bottom pocket. All of them are going to be played for from this table. First, he positions himself. Now he checks his target. He makes sure he doesn't arouse any suspicion by reading his newspaper. Alex retrieves his newspaper. That's certainly all anyone in the cafe sees. Let's look at it again. Alex deliberately drops the newspaper, but what's he up to? If you can't tell, then have a look from this angle. Under cover of the newspaper, Alex lifts the contents of the inside jacket pocket. The spy camera shows his catch, a passport, mobile phone and wallet. Alex coolly hides his hoard before calmly leaving the table, his crime undetected. He now needs to get into position for his second pocket. A trip to the bathroom is a good enough excuse. Alex returns and with nerves of steel, sits just a metre away from his first victim. Thank you. 
Alex uses his mobile phone as an excuse to go for the second pocket. Let's look at that again. What's Alex got? In a closer view, we see Alex has only managed to grab a glasses case. The spy cam shows it was a good lift, but it's a poor haul. He won't be happy with that, so he's off to get a beer from the bar, a handy excuse for repositioning himself for pocket number three. What kind of beer do you have in a bottle? Alex is back at the table and is lining up his next pocket. Incredibly, his two previous victims are still unaware of being robbed. Alex's next target is too engrossed in his conversation to notice what is going on behind his back. And he's off. Straight away, he's grabbed a mobile phone. The spy camera shows his nimble fingers at work. But Alex has also caught some mints. With almost breathtaking cheek, he puts them back and still goes unnoticed. He manages to pick the victim's travel card. So with the prospect of not having to walk home, Alex prepares to leave. And his cool nerve even permits him a final swig of beer before heading off. So, Alex's tally for one lunchtime's pickpocketing adds up to potentially more than £2,000 in stolen cards, cash and goods. Alex, Jess and Paul have been busy practising different ways of lifting people's valuables straight from under their noses. Pickpocketing is a skill that thieves have been mastering and developing for centuries. So Alex and Paul are going to try out their newly acquired skills on members of the public. This is the lift. Any form of public transport is a playground for pickpockets. So our hustlers have got back on the buses to practice their techniques. Alex is on the lookout for possible lifts. This man is proudly wearing his designer pen clipped onto his front pocket and it's caught Alex's eye. A little stumble into the mark, and the pen now belongs to Alex, and the mark's completely unaware that his expensive pen has disappeared. If you didn't catch it the first time, here it is again. The fake stumble distracts the mark, while Alex skillfully lifts the pen by hooking it over his newspaper. It's so quick that the only way you can see it is from Alex's watch camera. Alex now has a designer fountain pen worth £120. Sweet. Now Alex and Paul team up on this unsuspecting mark. This is perhaps the trickiest lift of them all. This Mark is just about to lose his wallet straight from his inside jacket pocket. A fake stumble and the Mark is now minus a wallet. Paul stumbles into the Mark, pushing him against Alex. Alex then lifts the wallet and drops it through the Mark's jacket for Paul to catch. Here it is again. With a clean pass off to Paul, he is now free to make a quick getaway right behind the victim's back. Always keep a mind out for your valuables and your belongings. Sometimes when people are listening to music on their headphones, they get lost in their own world. It's very dangerous. Keep your mind out for your belongings. If you're taking a little bit of care, pickpockets are going to move on to somebody else who's not paying any attention. Mm -hmm.